Hi, my name is East, and today I'm going to show you how to make this watercolor painting of some flowers. For this watercolor painting, you will need a pencil and an eraser, paper, the thicker the better, a small brush for detail work, a clean water for coloring with your watercolors, and a dirty water for cleaning your brush in between the colors. This helps keep your colors from getting too muddied. A medium brush, some tape, and of course, watercolors. To start my project, I'm going to tape it to a flat surface using painter's tape or another delicate tape that's not going to tear at my paper. Then I'm going to go ahead and sketch out all the details really lightly on my page and erase any areas where I press a little bit too, too hard. This is because the watercolors are transparent and we're gonna build in layers on top of it and so sometimes pencil might show through. For our first layer, we're gonna use the lightest and broadest strokes of color. So I'm starting with a light pink for the peony that's gonna be in the middle of our page and some light greens for leaves. I'm going to make a fern off to the side. I'm going to go back and add a purple layer on the side for a pansy. An off-white color for a dogwood that goes right next to our peony. And then another light green layer off to the side for a leaf at the bottom. I'm going to add another green detail off to the side just to balance out our page and make it symmetrical. Then we're going to let our page fully dry in between layers and come back. These dark pink lines I'm adding here are going to be for where we want to show off the petals of the peony. I'm going to start by drawing them in detail and then going back with some fresh water and spreading the pigment across our our flower. And go back with a little bit more pigment and add a little bit more color and detail in how we want our petals to look. I'm going to go back with a darker blue on our pansy and add some definition to show the top three petals of our flower. And then highlight the edges of the dogwood using a darker pink color. And then just paint in some of those lines to show ridges in the dogwood. And then I'm going to go back with a dark purple to start on the bottom petals of the pansy. For the leaves, we're going to add just a little bit of shadow um, with a just a little bit darker shade of green that matches up with each of them. Same with our fern. So for the second layer, we're not going to do very close details, but just another touch of color that adds a little bit more definition to the petals and leaves we've created. Remember to dry completely between layers. For our final layer, we're going to go back and highlight the middle of our flowers that we've left blank with some yellow and orange details for the pistils and stamens of our flowers. In the dogwood, we're going to use a light brown and just make tiny circles for the center of that flower. Then we can, of course, go back and add a little bit more detail, darker than before, on our pansy. And another dark green layer for the veins and outline details of all of our leaves. For a fern, I'm going to highlight with a little bit lighter green around the edges. And then I'm going to go back with just clean water and brush over it to blend all the colors together. Once you've done all of your layers, make sure your painting dries completely. If you wanted to add any more details, such as going around with an outliner or fine liner, 
a dark pen or ink, you could do that now. Otherwise, make sure that your, your painting is dry and gently peel off the tape that's been affixing it to your flat surface. Because we've focused our design on the lower half of the page, we can now fold our paper in half and make it into a card. You could send this card to a friend, a loved one, or anyone else who could use a little bit of care during this time. If you're interested in seeing more crafts and more programming from the Greensboro Library, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and check out our YouTube page. For more materials and information on crafting, make sure to check out the North Carolina Digital Library and our other online resources. There you go. You've made a beautiful watercolor card to send to someone. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.